<coughs> is called conservation of momentum. Let's talk about that word conserve for a minute. Uh, what does that mean? Conservation, what does that mean? Conservation of momentum, but ignore the momentum part and just talk about conservation. What does that word mean? Yeah, nothing changes. If you want to conserve the forest, that means you want the forest to be the same this day as it is the next time you look. It's conserved. Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> so conservation of momentum means the momentum doesn't change. That's all it means. In math words, here's how we write this. The momentum before equals the momentum after. It's conserved. It didn't change. That's all that means. Now here's the thing. What is conserved when? There's conditions for this. Okay, so when we say the conservation of momentum, you need, your brain needs to put up little light bulbs that says, ah, we're talking about collisions, car crashes, ping pong balls, bounce, or, uh, billiard balls bouncing off of each other, collisions, okay? So let me specify this. This thing here, you use this for collisions. There are two kinds of collisions. Here's the, here they are. Now, well, I'll just give you the two and then we'll talk about it for a second. Okay, first kind, hit and bounce. That's called elastic collisions. What is elastic? Anybody do any sewing? What's elastic? Okay, anybody have any elastic in your clothing? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure all of you have elastic in your clothing right now. It's, it's pretty commonplace to have it in our clothing. It's the stretchy stuff, the bouncy stuff. Here's my point. Collisions that bounce are called elastic collisions. So if two cars run into each other and they perfectly bounce off of each other, no damage, either car. They perfectly bounce, that would be called an elastic collision. Cars don't do that, by the way. Billiard balls do, though. They bounce into each other with almost no damage. Okay, uh, the second kind is just the opposite. Car here, something here, they go hit and stick. And it guesses to what that one's called? If hit and bounce is elastic, what's hit and stick? Non it's actually the word is inelastic, but yes, it's the same thing. Inelastic, not elastic, They're, they don't bounce. Okay, now, really, real life, those are the two extreme cases. They either perfectly bounce or perfectly don't bounce. Real life happens most of the time in the middle. But for the purposes of the class, we're only gonna deal with the extreme in either case, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> so, when is momentum conserved? You've got two types of collisions. Uh, elastic and inelastic. Momentum is conserved in both. Momentum is conserved for both elastic and inelastic collisions. <clears throat> There's something else that's going on here, and it's conservation of kinetic energy. And that is not conserved in both. It's only conserved for elastic, not inelastic. Okay.
Now, let me explain one more situation before we move on to a problem. The other situation that you need to know about is explosions. Where does that fit into this situation? Because explosions are just a special case of this. Okay, so to figure this out, let's do a thought experiment. I'm not going to actually do this experiment because you'll see why in a second. Okay, so pretend on my hand right here, I have a grenade. It's live, the pin's been pulled. Okay, this is why this is a thought experiment, right? Okay, so there's the grenade. It's going to explode and, and just watch it in your mind, it explodes. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Shrapnel goes in all directions because that's what grenades do, right? Okay, that was an explosion. Okay, now take that videotape in your mind of that explosion and rewind it. Watch it in reverse. All that stuff that's all out in other directions goes <laughs> What was that? Was that a collision? What kind? Inelastic. inelastic. Why is it inelastic? They hit and stuck. Did y'all see that? So explosions are collisions, specifically inelastic collisions, but in reverse. Does that make sense to everybody? So I told you this is concerned for collisions, but that, inc that includes explosions. So if you have an explosion, what do you have? An inelastic, an inelastic collision in reverse. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Now, by the way, explosions don't ha are not limited to grenades. Let me give you a more common example. <clears throat> Jeremiah, are you ready? Okay, here we go. I'm standing here. I'm holding a marker. We're one object, me and the marker. Neither one of us are moving. Are you ready? Here we go. That was a horrible throw. I mean, just absolutely horrible. Anyway. <clears throat> My point is, me and that marker, we're one object, now we're two. Not only that, but the marker was moving. What is that? That's an explosion. A much less violent one. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So it could be something very tame like that. But all the same, that's an explosion, which is what? An inelastic collision in reverse, okay? I can't catch or throw today. <clears throat> okay, so with all that in mind, let's do a problem. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you've got a ball. <clears throat> oh no. Uh, we'll skip that one because I have to bring out a toy and I didn't bring the toy out. So we'll come back to this example. I'll bring a toy next time. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's do, uh, it's, this is problem 6.38. The problem is uh, you've got two discs of equal mass. And this is one of those hockey table, uh, air hockey tables, you know, where they bounce those discs around. You all know what I'm talking about, right? Those air hockey tables. Okay, so you've got this disc. There's two of them. They're exactly the same. And they bounce perfectly. Isn't that what they do? When you play air hockey, those discs bounce. Up. What kind of collisions are those? Elastic. Elastic. Okay, the orange disc is initially at rest. Okay, so orange. It's red today. There's a red disc. It says it's orange, <clears throat> and it's just sitting there. So its initial speed is zero. And then meanwhile, it's struck by a blue disc that's moving at five meters per second. So the blue disc, oh, where's my blue? There it is. So I've got a blue disc that's gonna fly in here like this, and they're gonna run into each other. This one's going at five, meters per second. <clears throat> after, okay, after the collision, 
the blue disc moves in a direction that makes an angle of 37 degrees with the original direction. Okay, so think about the original direction. The blue disc is going this way. What's it going to do after the collision? Which way is it going to go? That way, 37 degrees up from the original direction. Okay, so they're going to collide here and the blue disc is going to go off this way. V final. What's the red disc going to do? It's going to go off that way. Does that make sense to everybody? Y'all have seen this sort of thing happen before. Okay, so the, <clears throat> the velocity of the orange disc is perpendicular to that of the blue disc. Okay, so now let's see. That's 37. It says that the, the red disc, is, its path is perpendicular to that one. So where's its angle? Where is it pointing? Down that way, and its path is perpendicular. So it's going to go this way. V final of the red disc is going to be that way. And what's this angle going to be right here? Oh, you're going all the way around? Just, just do, just do uh, 90 minus that. What is it? 53? Am I doing that math right in my head? Where did I get the 53? Well, the problem told me that the two were perpendicular. Okay, I got it from the problem. And the question is, what's the final velocity of each disc? We're told the initial velocity, we're told final angles. You have to find final velocities. Okay, well, where are we going to start? Any ideas? Here's the way this always works in class. It doesn't work this way in homework. In class, I show you a concept and say, here's this vague, abstract sort of thing. And then I say, let's do an example that does that concept. So guess which, question, which equation we're going to use? <laughs> yeah, let's use conservation momentum. Now, this is elastic. So what's conserved for elastic collisions? Both, right? Momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved. But you know what? Let's, let me just write up the conservation of kinetic energy equation. Kinetic, kinetic energy initial equals kinetic energy final. What's the equation for kinetic energy? There you go, one half mv squared. So this is one half mv initial squared equals one half mv final squared. Uh-oh, square. You know what that means? Not always, but frequently, that means you're going to have to do quadratic equation, which is painful. So, since we have the choice of conservation of momentum or conservation of kinetic energy, let's choose momentum. And if we're forced to go down the road of conservation of kinetic energy, then we will. But let's start with momentum. Does that make sense to everybody? So we'll start with conservation of momentum. And that is <coughs> momentum initial equals momentum final, which means mv equals mv final initial. Where are the squares here? Oh, there aren't. That means no quadratic equation. Okay. See why we're choosing this one? We could choose the other one. It would just be painful. Okay, so <clears throat> here's how we have to figure this out. Our system is two objects, the blue one and the red one. That's our system. And we're asked the question, what's the momentum of the system initially? So we have to look at each object and figure it out. Is that one moving? 
Yeah. So does it have momentum? Yeah. Sure enough. So I'm going to do uh, mass times velocity initial blue. Because there's the blue disc and the red disc. And they both have the same mass. The problem tells us that. What about the red disc before the collision? This is initially. That means initially before the collision. Zero. It's zero. It has no momentum. So I'm not even going to write anything for that. Does that make sense to everybody? Well, what about finally? What has momentum after the collision? They both do. So now, momentum is a vector. So what does that mean? That means we have to do this in the x and the y direction. We've got to figure it out for both. Aye, aye, aye. And this is going to be a whole lot of board space. But OK, so let's do this in the, so let's just do this x right here. We'll do y in a second. Let's just keep going with the x. Because the initial momentum is in which way? x direction. So that's what's going to happen here in the x direction. OK, now we're going to go over here to after the collision in the x direction. Well, before we can do that, we've got some triangle work to do. So let's work out our triangles here. Uh, this one's moving this way. So we've got velocity, final, blue in the y direction, and velocity, final, blue in the x direction. And this angle here is 37, which means this angle here is also 37 by alternate interior angles, which you remember from kindergarten, because you learned that in preschool, right? Alternate interior angles theorem. Yeah. Yeah. Say it one more time. Oh, what? OK. Why did I draw it on top and seven underneath? OK, so. Jeremiah's question is a really good question. Why did I draw my triangle up here instead of on the bottom side? It's perfectly legit to draw it on the bottom side. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when I draw the red one. Because if I draw the blue one here, and then later I draw the red one here, they're going to be on top of each other. It's going to get confusing. So. Because you can draw it on either side, I'm drawing it on the top side, and I'll draw this one on the bottom side. That way, they're away from each other. So there you go. Everybody okay with this? Well, we need an equation here. What equation goes with this? If this side over here, the blue side is the hypotenuse, that's final velocity blue. What's the equation that describes final velocity blue y? We got to do x, we got to do y. Y'all should be good at this by now. I'm going to start writing it up here. Y'all think about it. Final velocity blue x is equal to final velocity blue y is equal to. What equation should I put there? Yeah, there's my angle, 37, right there. This side's touching it. That makes adjacent. And the blue side, that's the hypotenuse. Which one goes with adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So cosine, I'll just write this here in green, and then I'll erase it in a minute. Cosine 37 is adjacent. That's velocity final blue x divided by the hypotenuse, which is velocity final blue. Y'all see how to go with this here? We're looking for this one. How do I get velocity blue x by itself? I'm going to multiply this velocity blue up here. So this equation is going to be velocity final blue times cosine 37. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Well, now that we've done that, what's the y, what's the y equation going to be? Y 
velocity, final blue, sign 37. Okay, well, we've done that one. Let's do the other one now. So, this one is velocity, final red. We're going to break it down into its X and Y components. Velocity, final red, Y. Velocity, final red, X. And this angle was 53, so this angle is 53. Okay, so I need those equations over here. Velocity, final red, X. Velocity, final red, Y. Y'all should be good at this now. Uh, did I do that right? I did that completely wrong. It sure is. I did not apply, I did not apply alternate interior angles properly, even though I should have learned it in preschool. Sorry about that. Thank you for catching that. <clears throat> Okay, y'all give me some equations here. What's the x equation going to be? Yep, this is the adjacent, it's touching the angle. So I'm going to need velocity, final, red, cosine, 53. What's it going to be for the y comp component? Same thing, but sine, sure enough. Velocity, final, red, sine. 53. Whew. Okay, now that we've had yet our, which one is this? Maybe our 500th lesson on sines and cosines now? If nothing else, y'all are good at sines and cosines now, right? Okay, <clears throat> now that we have that, now we can do this next piece. Momentum final in the x direction after the collision. What has momentum? Is the blue one moving in the x direction after the collision? Yes. So we need mass times velocity final of blue in the x direction. So it's going to be final velocity blue cosine 37. Is anything else moving in the x direction after the collision? The red one is, right? So we have to add up those momentums. Our system has two objects moving in the x direction. So we have to add those momentums together. So we're going to have mass times velocity times this one here. Mass, final velocity red, cosine 53. Okay. Well, how many unknowns do we have here? One, two, two unknowns. And, and actually, those are the two unknowns we're looking for. So this is, we're doing good, except that, what'd you say? One equation can't solve for two unknowns. We need another equation. So what should we do? Let's go to the y direction. Okay, so we're gonna do, <coughs> Oh wait, we can simplify this ever so slightly. What, what's the simplification? Do y'all see it? What's that? Yeah, there's a mass in every single term. So let's just divide both sides by m. And mass will go away. Okay, so let me rewrite that. <clears throat> so we've got initial velocity blue is equal to final velocity blue times the cosine of 37 plus final velocity red times the cosine of 53. Whew. Now let's do y. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line here and I'll use a new color. We haven't used pink yet today. So now we're going to do initial momentum y equals final momentum yeah, that's it. 
Final momentum, y. What has momentum in the y direction before the collision? Nothing. Nothing. What does that mean? Zero. No momentum. Now, what has momentum in the y direction after the collision? They're both moving in the y direction. Okay, so let's do the blue one first. So we're going to do mass times final velocity blue in the y direction. So this is going to be final velocity blue sine 37. <clears throat> now let's do the red one. What should we write for that one? This is the fourth one. The pattern hasn't changed. How do we find momentum? I heard you say something. Mass times velocity, is that what you said? <laughs> so we're going to do plus mass times final velocity red sine 53. Now I'm standing here and I'm telling you, this ain't right. What's wrong? We made a mistake. Anybody catch it? Let me give you a big giant hint. It's right there. Which way is the red disc going after the collision? Down. What does that mean? So that means that really we should have put right here a negative sign because it was going down. Do y'all see that? And you only can get that from a picture. You got to draw a good picture. You skip the picture, you'll miss the negative. You miss the negative, you miss the problem. So that means when we write this out, this becomes plus a negative. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Oh, yours is stretching. Okay. <clears throat> Y'all doing all right? Okay, we can simplify this. What can we simplify? Yeah, we can, we, we can just divide both sides by M. What happens? The M's go away again. You say, but there's no masses over here. <laughs> What's zero divided by M? Yeah, okay. So M's still go away. Okay, so there we go. At this point, the physics is done. We've got two equations. We're looking for two unknowns. All done. Any questions as to how we got here? Y'all doing all right? Okay. Well, we've got some algebra to do. We've got seven minutes. I think we can knock it out. Let's start by, uh, let me clear off some board space. And I'll pick up with a new color. Let's take this equation here, and I'm just going to take this piece, and I'm going to add it over to the other side. See that piece over there? It's, it's plus a negative, so I'm just going to, so that's really a subtraction, right? So I'm just going to add this whole chunk to the other side. So I've got now uh, V final red times the sine of 53 equals V final blue times the sine of 37. <clears throat> and now I'm going to divide this sine 53 over there so I can solve for one of my unknowns. Okay, so I'm going to have velocity final red is equal to velocity final blue times the sine of 37, the whole thing divided by the sine of 53. Y'all see what I did? Why did I do that? What, what's, how do you solve a system of two unknowns? Remember, you solve for one of your unknowns, it doesn't matter which one. In one of your equations, it doesn't matter which one. And then plug it into the other equation. So that's what we're doing. I just, I just picked one one that looked the easiest, 
and solve for that. Solve for one unknown. Now what am I going to do with this? I'm going to take this chunk here and I'm going to plug it into my other equation right here. Okay, so I'll pick a, yet a different color for that. I haven't used purple yet. <coughs> okay, so I draw a line so the board doesn't get any more confusing than it already is. I'm going to rewrite this, this big blue equation right here. I'm going to rewrite the whole thing, but I'm going to throw this in here right there. So this black equation right here is going to go in right here for that final velocity of red. Okay, so I'm going to get velocity initial blue equals velocity final blue times a cosine, that's an F, times a cosine of 37. And then I'm going to have plus this thing, velocity final blue, sine 37 over sine 53, and the whole thing is times cosine of 53. Do you all see what I did? Did I do it right? I make mistakes. I think I did. Okay, now what? We now have one equation with one unknown. What do we do now? Any ideas? The thing we're looking for is right here, but it shows up twice. How are we going to solve for that? We've got to pull that final velocity blue, pull it out. I'll, I'll just do that. Okay, so we've got initial velocity blue, that's just 5, y'all remember that from the problem? That's just 5, is equal to final velocity blue, and I'm just going to pull it out. So it's going to be times the cosine of 37 plus the sine of 37 divided by the sine of 53 times the cosine of 53. There we go. Now I want you to notice cosine 37, that's just a number. Sine 37, that's just a number. There's a number and there's a number. There's all these numbers. With everything over here, that's just numbers. Does that make sense? Well, how do we, get, how do we solve for this now? What's the last step? Yeah, just take this whole parenthetical chunk here and divide it downstairs so that we get final velocity blue is equal to initial velocity blue divided by that whole big thing, cosine 37 plus sine 37 over sine 53 times cosine 53. There you go. Plug and chug. And since we only have a few seconds left, my notes are trying to escape here. Let's see. <clears throat> Final velocity of blue. When you punch this out on your, on your own, you can see if you're getting it, punching it right, is 3.993 meters per second. What are we going to do with that? How are we going to get final velocity red? Where are we going to plug it in? How about right here? Just take that answer, plug it in there. That'll give you this answer. That's 3.009. Final velocity red is 3.009 meters per second.
Okay, well, I'm now 10 seconds over, so it's time to be done. Y'all have a good weekend. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>